Good morning as we gather once more for, for worship together in our various locations. We are beginning the season of Advent, four Sundays before Christmas, and it prepares our way for the coming of Jesus. Let us begin our service of worship. We gather in this time of waiting we call Advent to reflect upon our lives, our faith, our past, present, and future. We gather to support each other through the coming season of Christmas with its joy for some, sorrow for others. We gather to reset ourselves on our faith journey within our Christian family, the church. Let us worship God, who gives us Jesus Christ, alive in the past, in the present, and in the future. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, our hearts are filled with anticipation. The promise of new life is proclaimed. Our hearts are overflowing. Take any jadeness that we hold on to and set it free so that we might fully embrace this wondrous time of year. May the joy of this blessed season be experienced by all people, especially in gentle ways for those who are hurting and lonely. Grant life-changing peace and love to your beloved ones, we pray, focusing on the stable of Bethlehem. Amen. And our prayer of renewal. Loving and gracious God, you chose each of us to be your servants, inviting us to respond to your call. But even as we think of excuses, we think of those who have answered your call with courage and conviction. The prophets who spoke in your name, even though they often were despised and rejected. Mary, who risked ridicule and shame. John the Baptist, who would not keep quiet, even when his life was threatened. And Jesus, our Savior, who gave himself for us. Loving God, help us to, like the, to be like these faithful. Help us to say yes when you call, call upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Advent is a time for reflection, for confession and repentance. God hears, God knows, and through God's loving kindness we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. We now gather together around the Advent wreath and light candles over the next four Sundays. Advent 1. In this season of expectant waiting, we wonder and we hope. So many marvels, so much that confounds us, so much that is unique, so much richness, so many things we can touch and taste and smell and hear. Hope rises within us. Look at life abundant in growing complexities and with bewildering inter inter intricacies. Look at the variety. Look how they work together, connected. Hope bubbles to the surface. We bask in wonder at God's creativity, at blessings showered abundantly, while hope flames into promise. We light the hope candle. Aha! Having a bit of a problem here. There, we light the candle of hope on our Advent wreath. Hope should not come to us easily. Hope should be a part of our everyday living, however, and may God bless. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, reading from the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 24. In those days, after the suffering and the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. 
from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is here. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, or no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be in the, on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake the Gospel of Christ. I've been preparing sermons for more than a few years now. I cannot remember for how long, but before we began our partnership together, before we began our journey of faith together over one year ago. I've been involved with the church since the latter part of the 1980s. For the most part, I followed the common lectionary, the readings of scripture as determined by someone or some group of people in the know out there. The common lectionary is designed to expose us to the Bible and the stories contained in it over the course of a year. The lectionary takes us through the Bible not only one year, but it also gives us the Bible from various perspectives. These perspectives are developed over a three-year period with each year designated as year A, year B, and year C. Year A is set up around the Gospel of Matthew. Year B centers on the Gospel of Mark. And year C follows the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of John is sprinkled throughout these three years. So because of the common lectionary, we get to hear the Bible in its entirety at least three times. The reading selected for each of these three years is the same for each of the particular years. What I mean is that the readings for year A are always the same. The readings for year B and C are always the same. We do not only get to hear the whole Bible each year, we also get to hear it in three, it three times as we explore God's message, as we travel our particular personal faith journey. So, that should make my job fairly easy. All I have to do is keep my reflections for each of the years and repeat them whenever that particular year is the one we are following. We're beginning year B, so all I need to do is dig out the messages I prepared for year B from before. But that is the amazing thing. Although the readings are always the same ones, the message is not. The message cannot be the same. And for me, that is the amazing thing. But why is the message different? I was once told the message you gave was good, but it was 14 and a half minutes long. I've heard others, from others what some of you think about the messages, and what those others have told me is encouraging. But the length, the length in time to deliver one of these, top, one of these tops the list of favorable comments. An older gentleman mentioned many times to me whether or not I have or have not challenged him. Hopefully my reflections have challenged. Hopefully they have encouraged us to move forward. Hopefully they have taken us to a different place in our understanding of the things we call God. A lady told me once that my reflections were personal. Not personal in the sense that they dealt with my own personal self, 
but personal in the sense that they were aimed toward each one of us as persons. I believe and I hope that the central point of my reflections are based on discipleship, that the messages are about our own individual response to the Word of God. Now I am finding that the message to still refer to us in a more personal way, but that is how church grows. We each do our bit, but we also do our bit as the group that, and that is what church is all about. And that has been very difficult in these COVID-19 times. But I ask, how God, does God want the church to look? How do the others see church? Today, probably, more than any other time in our lives, during COVID, what church is, is impacting personal lives every day. While we were unable to gather from March to September, how church is reflected is of most importance. Outside of Jesus, no one has had more influence on what is church than the Apostle Paul. Although we get most of our information about Jesus from the four Gospels, <coughs> excuse me, we get most of our church from Paul. The church, like any organization, has grown and matured because of the movers and shakers who have played a part within the confines of this stuff we know as church. The church has grown to become what it is because scholars throughout the ages were influenced by Paul. Paul went about the Mediterranean world establishing communities, little groups of people. He took Jesus seriously. Those little groups of people also took Jesus seriously, and they have built a major force that changed the world forever. So what is church? Is it the building or is it the people? How do we perceive our church? Not necessarily the United Church of Canada, but rather our local United Church. Wesley St. Matthews here in Pugwash. Are we a force within our communities? What are we doing right now, this very day, as a church? How do we want other people in our communities to see our church? How do they see us? I know that we are doing our bit. Some of us reached out during the time when we were confined to our homes. I know that we offered to run errands for those who are unable to do them for themselves. I know that those errands included getting groceries, the mail, dropping casseroles in, and the like. I know we called friends and loved ones just to chat and to find out how they were doing. I know that we are being the church, being disciples, and for that I give you all a big hug and say, have a good week. Thanks. Amen.
God is with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right that we lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God, our God. It is right to give thanks and praise to God. It is truly the right thing to do that we thank you and praise you, most God, most holy, creator of all. For we are not alone. We live in your world. We live in your world. We live in your creation, in all of its wonder and all of its life. We believe in you who has created and is creating. In your love with your word, by your spirit, you brought all things into being. In your love, with your word, by your spirit, you bring all things into being. With that creation you live, entangled and entwined with all people, all places, and all things. Alleluia. We believe in you who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. On the night that he was taken to what would be his death on a cross, Jesus gathered with his disciples for a meal of remembrance, a meal of hope, and a meal of challenge. As the disciples gathered, he served them, washing their feet. As the disciples ate, he taught them, helping them to understand what would come. As the disciples raged and disbelieved, he loved them, even knowing he would be betrayed, even knowing he would be abandoned. And his judgment was to love them, every single one, no matter what. That is our hope. He took bread, broke it, and gave thanks to you, God, of all creation. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat bread, remember me. In life, in death, in life beyond death, he took wine, poured it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is all of, drink this, all of you. This is my promise in my life's blood that sins are forgiven. Each time you drink, remember me. God is with us. We are not alone. Holy God, send your spirit upon this bread and this liquid and all who are gathered, that they and we might truly be the body and blood of Jesus Christ alive in your creation. Thanks be to God. You, God, who are our Father, who art in heaven. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, to the life we have received, Thank you, God. Help us to be your church in the days, weeks, and years to come, filled and refreshed by your constant love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
let us be attentive to our offering. Grant us, God, the grace of giving, with a spirit large and free, that ourselves and all our living we may offer faithfully. Let us pray. Gracious God, with thanks and praise we joyfully bring this Advent offering. We ask that these gifts be used to bring joy to our community and joy to the world. We ask this in the name of the one you sent to bring us joy, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to be ready for the coming of Jesus. Be with us, loving God. Encourage us to take time for our spiritual health. We want to be ready for the coming of Jesus. Remind us to look out for the needs of family members and friends. We want to be ready for the coming of Jesus. Show us what we can usefully give to the life of this faith community. We want to be ready for the coming of Jesus. Alert us to the crying needs of the world that call out for our support. Guide us to nourish our spirits with calm and quiet waiting. Make us ready to act with compassion for ourselves and for any who are sick and downhearted. Help us express our readiness as we work to cooperatively with faith community members. For we rejoice in what we can do together in response to the needs of our suffering world. We are ready, O God. We are ready because we know your peace. Amen. We pray for those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries. And this week we have the birthdays of Pauline Jameson and Jean McLean. We pray for those who are now at rest. Remembering John Robert Mackenzie, Sr., Louise Marie Ripley. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth, for the love of God is ours to share, the peace of Christ is ours to extend, the power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Amen. Let's go in peace. Let's never be afraid. God will guide us each hour of every day. We go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. We know that God will guide us in all we do. Let us go now in love and show that we believe. We reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from within. Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. Amen.